As he set foot in the island, Renato couldn't help feeling a bit curious. Was Lupino still waiting to be rescued? No. He was probably drinking champagne with the ravens. Did ravens drink champagne? Did rabbits? Renato felt oddly thirsty, come to think of it. Why had he chosen the Sky Ripper? Renato never made plans that required constant vigilance. He was a hero. He didn't think too much. He just went with his gut and hoped it all worked out. The Sky Ripper was a long shot. He'd have to devote himself to it. No side journeys, no rescuing old friends. That was against his nature. Could he stick with it? hated gogglers, but it freaked him out to cut them. That had been his mistake before, not trusting Zenobia's feelings for him. But how could he have known, after all these years of silence? Renato was looking for a big chest. Sound right. Renato loved puzzles, except when he couldn't figure them out. On the other hand, if there was a puzzle, it was probably meant to keep people away from something good.
Sky Ripper's armature. The stuff that dreams are made of. Engineers' dreams, anyway. The device was intricate. No one alive had the skill to make a thing like it. How is it part of a weapon at all? He'd have to ask a scientist. But first, he'd get the second piece. Sky Ripper had a heart. A core that had come to rest on the next island. Well, there was another island he could reach. Zenobia had just invaded it with her father's raven battalions. She must be encamped there still. But fighting Zenobia now, that made no sense at all. He'd already sacrificed one friend to get this, this armature, was it? He didn't need to hurry to face her. She would find him. It was a no-brainer. He'd sacrificed his old friend Lapino to get the armature. And the armature was useless by itself, only a series of coils and wheels. War demanded sacrifices, and he would make more before the end. He would have to choose the greatest good, no matter how much it cost him. Zenobia. Well, he would see her sooner or later, across a battlefield or a sword's point before all this was over. He was sure of that. The power was in the core. Obviously, he had to get the core. Doubt sunk in before he was even out of sight of the Farfarer. Why had he chosen the Sky Ripper? It was the sort of path he'd always avoided. The path of responsibility, of seriousness. Had he grown up? He didn't feel grown up. He'd made this decision from his gut, like he always did. Somehow, he'd impulsively decided to stop being impulsive. Did that make any sense? There was something sour in the air. Like the earth had ruptured over something that had been fermenting for a very long time. All right, you want to die first. Fewer and fewer trees. There are only these huge crystalline growths. Had those been here before? He no longer heard birds except for the feverish cawing of the ravens when they attacked. He couldn't smell the small animals of the forest. The mice and rabbits. Where had they gone? And he was getting hungry too. This was an unhealthy place to be. The 20-sided core made him feel physically sick. Once he had sneaked into a temple of the dark art and he hadn't liked what he smelt and saw there, this felt like that. As quick as he could, he wrangled the icosahedron into the armature. The wheels began to spin, then glow. The sick feeling quickly spun away. Now he only felt sad. He had lost good friends for this war apparatus. Hmm, maybe Lapino wasn't such a good friend. Yeah, that made him feel better. He carried his prize back to the Farfarer. Now, he had to make his next move. There was a key Imperial outpost on the Nexus. If this really was some sort of super weapon, he could use it to wreak havoc on the enemy. And if it wasn't, well, better to know that before the final battle. But maybe he should show it to some scientists first. 
There was an observatory on the Nexus. Maybe he should go there before he fired it. Well, of course. If you've just assembled a weapon out of legend that can exile gods from the world, you'd want to have a scientist or two look at it. And even if they disagreed and he had time, he could ask Calaveras himself. Yes, the observatory would be his objective. Why had the parts of the Sky Ripper only surfaced now, thousands of years after the transcendent Emperor had dismantled it? The mad Emperor Isengrim had performed terrible, bloodthirsty rituals to invoke the lost gods. Was that why these ancient artifacts were rising out of the ground? How perfect, then, that the Sky Ripper would reappear to be his destruction. And, hopefully this time, just his destruction. The legendary weapon was exactly what the Rebellion needed. They were outnumbered. The once kind Emperor had become a tyrant. But his ravens stayed loyal, for he fed them his victims, and the other animals were too frightened to rebel. Renato shuddered at what the Emperor was trying to do. To bring back the lost gods, the Black Harvest, the Black Sun? No. He would stop that toad, no matter what the risk. Renato's path was clear. Let the scientists ensure the Sky Ripper was safe to use, bring it to the rebel base, and then assault the Imperial fleet for the win. Energy cannons, the last argument of kings.
tempted to just stand on the device and let it do all the killing for me. But that would be sporty, wouldn't it? Or fun. Renata was thrilled. The scientists seemed to think he'd put the Sky Ripper together right. But one toad was worried. Yeah, he, the, the Sky Ripper could tear a hole in existence itself. There are invisible strings that tie the universe together. If the Sky Ripper cut one, the hole would widen and widen until our whole existence uh, fell into it. Another toad sighed. Uh, Irving still believes in string theory. At least go see Calaveras. Hmm, yeah, said the worried Toad. He knows more than anyone else has forgotten about the Transcendent Emperor. If anyone could tell him how to use this weapon safely, it would be Calaveras. It was he who had told Renato how to find it in the first place. But maybe he had to give up on using it as a weapon. Maybe he had to go to the secret rebel base and ask the generals there what he could do with a weapon that he dared not use. One way or another, there had to be a safe way to use it. Well, he should have known he'd have to consult Calaveras again. The scientists at the observatory were smart enough. But what did they know of the transcendent emperor? He hoped it wouldn't delay him too long. The Rebels had scheduled the final battle soon. Every day they delayed risked the exposure of the secret base. And some soldiers were already drifting back to their homes and families. Calaveras would fix the Sky Ripper for him. And then he would win the final battle. Maybe it was the cold, but after a few steps, Renato's optimism started to slump. What if Calaveras couldn't help? Did Renato dare use the Sky Ripper? Oh, he hated that he had chosen this path. It was so much simpler to rescue friends and attack enemies, even if some of those friends were more trouble than his enemies. Some of those enemies had been friends before and might be lovers after. No, it wasn't all that much. Physics made his brain. That, at least, I'm sure of. to focus on the now. The ravens who seemed everywhere all the time. Where did they hatch from? Were there giant raven hatcheries somewhere, or did they have families? He didn't want to think about raven mummies raising their darling raven chicks. Calaveras would help. He would make Renato feel better about using the Sky River. And then Renato wouldn't have to worry about ravens ever again. If 
he ever had a castle. He was going to hide his stuff better. Renato had sacrificed a friend for the Skyrim. It would be worth it if he could bring a super weapon to the rebellion, but the scientists had ruined everything. Calaveras had never let him down. Yeah, of, of course I can make it work better. But when Renato explained about the strings, Calaveras grew thoughtful. Oh, well, strange, you say? Well, the Arcana do speak of the ties that bind the world. He drew many intricate symbols in the dirt. Yeah, so, um, according to my calculations, uh, each time you fire, I'm afraid there's a 1 in 120 chance you'll destroy the universe. That's pretty good odds. That's like rolling, what, 21 dice and they all come up 6. What are the odds of that? What? No! It's more like 2.716s in a row. Anyway, with those odds, it won't happen if I use it just once, Bernardo said. Although he wasn't sure that was entirely right. Yeah, no, no, that's... No, no, that, that's not right. Each time you use it... Okay, look, just don't use it ever. All right, I guess. As he sailed towards the fleet, Renato could see the dropships of the rebels coming out of the clouds. This was it. The big battle. They could not afford to lose this one. What if it didn't go well? What if he had to use the Sky Ripper? Could he risk the entire universe in the throw of a dice? On the other hand, what were the odds of rolling 21? Or was it 2.71? Sixes in a row. He had a feeling they were surprisingly good. That is... bad. Anyway, the odds were big. His brain was hurting again. The battle was not going spectacularly well. What had the Rebels been thinking? They'd been thinking he would bring the Sky Ripper, or the Iblis Stone, or that he'd sideline Zenobia somehow, or turn her. Couldn't he use the Sky Ripper just once? After all, if chances were 1 in 128, that meant he'd for sure be okay the first time. They'd get worse each time he used it, but the first time would be okay, right? He wasn't sure that it was right. So he didn't fire the Sky Ripper. He just brought it along, in case. A present? For me?
Someone had told him the odds didn't change just because you'd had a streak of good luck. His gut told him that was wrong, though, and he always listened to his gut. On the other hand, 128 chances to win, but one of them destroyed the universe. That seemed a bit serious. Maybe he could defeat the Emperor without firing the Skywalker. Maybe he could bluff, but with a real weapon. Like in cards, when you had three names, but you pretended you had a fizzbin. That could work. set up the Sky Ripper and let it warm up. He would bluff if he had to. Zenobia came out, flanked by a very daunting platoon of ravens. You won't actually use that, she said in that annoying, I know everything because I'm a cat and you know nothing because you're just a fox voice she had. Or I know the odds. Good, because there's a real chance you could destroy the universe. No, not the first time I use it. The odds are too low. What? Uh, no. Yeah, sure. The first time, the odds are practically nothing. They only go up if I use it a bunch more times. No, but that's not how odds work. Didn't you pay attention in class? Now surrender, or I'll use it. Just once, he said. Don't. He felt sure the odds were with him. He had to go with his gut. That's what heroes do. Fire, he said. Please? The Sky Ripper fired. With a tremendous whoosh, the Emperor's flagship went up in flames. It was awesome. And then he noticed there was a hole in the air, a blackness like a tear in a parchment. Wind was blowing into it, widening it. It grew larger and even larger. Crates fell upwards into it, and the world itself seemed bent like the reflection on a curved mirror as it poured into the ravenous hole. Ah, oh, one in a hundred and twenty-eight. What are the odds? Thought Renardo, and then everything fell into the hole and was gone. The clouds parted over the Isles of Boreas. It was time to choose. The rebellion was in trouble. Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced. Renardo knew that using it could go catastrophically wrong, but he was sure he could figure out how to use it safely. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert. The Iblis Stone was hidden there. 
It was a dangerous artifact. It could corrupt its user into a bloodthirsty monster. Maybe he could find a way to use it. To take its power without surrendering to its wickedness. And also, his old friend Lapino needed rescuing. Of course, Renato had a pretty strong suspicion that Lapino had betrayed the rebellion. And he had a gut feeling that he needed to use that to his advantage.